Wayne Thiebaud is an American painter best known for his still life paintings of savory treats that are neatly and deliciously displayed using an oil on canvas technique that portray his illustrative style. He was born November 15, 1920 to a Mormon family in Mesa, Arizona. His birth name was Morton Wayne Theobald. Little is known about Theobald's childhood, but we do know that he moved with his family to Long Beach, California when he was six months old. At a very young age, Theobald showed interest in the arts, but it was not in painting. When he was in high school, he took on commercial art, which is an art form used for selling and advertising. His true passion was in comic strips, so he set out to venture into the life of a cartoonist during that time. Theobald was inspired by the work of George Herman, who made comic strips of Crazy Cat. He began doodling on paper, which later led him to label himself as a cartoonist. It was through inspiration that Theobald started to make a name for himself, and it was through his sketches of random cartoons he made that would later land him a huge gig. In the meantime, he worked as a busboy in restaurants that displayed beautiful amounts of food and made a living off of it. One summer, during his high school career, Theobald worked as an apprentice at Walt Disney Studios where he assisted in the side scenes of Mickey Mouse, Pinocchio, Goofy, and Jiminy Cricket. Through his talent for cartooning, Theobald was able to land a huge role for an aspiring high school student. With thoughts of being able to continue his education in his area of interest, which was cartooning, possibilities seemed slim with the depression that took place in the 1930s. Food was sparse, meals became a luxury, and money was tighter for his family than it ever had been. Finding a job for all people became almost impossible. The following summer, Thea Bowen enrolled in Frank Wiggins Trade School, where he planned on learning sign painting. Sign painting is the art of painting signs for buildings or billboards with the purpose of advertising products, shows, and other things of that nature. This is also known as commercial art. However, experienced commercial artists in the school strongly encouraged him to go into illustration because of his talent while he was pursuing his degree in commercial art. Sadly, his art dream was put on hold with the coming of World War II. From 1942 to 1945, Theobald served in the Army Air Force, but because of his skill in cartooning and art, he was not on combat grounds fighting. Theobald continued to sketch during his free time, but not as much as he would have liked to. During the war, he met his wife, Patricia Patterson, and later had their first child named Twinka in 1945. In 1951, Mallory Ann, their second daughter, was born. After the war, Wayne resumed his artistic career as a commercial artist, working for Rexel Drugs and other companies. He went into commercial art because of his previous experience at Robert Wiggins Trade School. While working at Rexel Drugs, Thea Bow met Robert Mallory, who was also a commercial artist and aspiring fine artist. Mallory and Thea Bow became great friends, and it was actually he who pushed him to pursue his fine art career by attending school to broaden his understanding and knowledge. At this time, he was around 30 years of age. Theobo enrolled in California State University Systems where he earned his bachelor's and master's degree. His new goal in life was to be able to care for his family by teaching and to be able to pursue his lifelong dream of becoming a fine artist. After looking for a job, he was able to work as a professor at Sacramento City College where he taught throughout the 1950s. He also worked in set and exhibition design projects. When time was available or opportunity presented itself, Theobald spent time in New York where he went to get a better grasp of what fine art was. Because his education was not in the subject, he taught himself about painting styles, materials, techniques, and what made other fine artists successful. During trips there, he acquainted himself with artists and art critics that were highly successful and later realized that he would be able to use everyday objects from his life to make artwork that depicted a life story through food. Here we have Theobald's pie counter, which he drew in 1963. It's an oil on canvas painting that's 30 by 36 inches big. It is at the Whitney Museum of American Art in New York. Theobald's pie counter was only a year apart from Andy Warhol's soup cans. During this time, the big pop art epidemic was taking place. However, Theobald did not consider himself to be a pop artist. 
He created Pie Counter because of his past experiences working with food in the cafeterias when he was growing up. Theobald's Pie Counter, among his other tasty and well-organized paintings, embody the many memories he had growing up in the 1920s onto adulthood. Working in the restaurant business, he was constantly exposed to cakes and tasty treats that were neatly and vibrantly displayed for people to indulge in during a time of social gathering. In his time, cakes and treats were not typically enjoyed from a restaurant. Rather, they were enjoyed in the comfort of one's home. Nearing the 50s, the American people were frequenting eating away from the home in cafeterias where slices of cake and other foods were displayed for choice. It was a time where people were encouraged to make food or treat selections from what was visually available. In Pie Counter, I see a beautifully displayed dessert table full of tasty treats that are asymmetrical. The colors are warm and neutral, achromatic, subtractive, and analogous. It is considered to be representational art. There is negative space in the background, has linear perspective, actual lines, and contour. Theobald made this piece relating it to his life living in the depression of the 1930s and working in the food industry, and relating it to his current day in the 1960s and how food became an abundance rather than a meal that the family was going to have that night. During the Depression, when there was a four-course meal at the table, that was considered a luxury. After, in the 1960s, food was an extra and people were frequenting eating out at restaurants rather than enjoying a home-cooked meal at home with one another. Food during the Depression was never thrown away. Instead, it was saved and enjoyed later, if there was any left. Theobald's pie counter piece can be dissected using cultural studies to help understand how life was back then for him and what it was in the 1960s. The pop art movement during the 60s consisted of pieces that had a ton of color, celebrities that were impactful or used as sex symbols, post-World War II events, and even cartoons like Batman and Wonder Woman for entertainment. Although colorful, artists like Andy Warhol, Roy Lichtenstein, James Rosenquist and Clay Oldenburg made pieces that were internationally influential in popular culture using everyday objects in everyday life to symbolize life during that era. Because of the meaning of the pop art movement and the history behind it, Theobald did not consider himself to be a pop artist. He used his past to tell a story instead of focusing on events that were happening then. It is the techniques that he used, like the vibrancy and colors and the brushwork that put him in the category of pop art. Many pop artists, like Warhol and Rosenquist, embraced the post-World War II manufacturing and media boom. Only Theobald used his past experience instead of focusing on what was popular during the pop art movement. Something interesting that I discovered through this research was that many pop artists mentioned began as commercial artists as well, and their background in commercial art trained their artistic eye in mass culture and their brains to merge techniques together to create a whole new realm of art. Pretty cool, huh? To sum it up, Theobald used his young childhood experiences of food shortages and living in the Great Depression to tell a story during the pop art movement. Although relatable for some, to people like you and me, it truly does tell a beautiful story. The above teaches us that food should be appreciated and not wasted, because living day to day wondering where your next meal will come from can be very sad and depressing in itself. He uses color to embody the beauty of food, large amounts to broadcast the plethora that we now have, and his history to show that there are people who will probably never see the amount of food in their lifetime especially behind a glass window from a top-notch bakery or cafeteria. He also teaches us to be grateful for what we have and the luxuries that are provided, even if we do not see them as one, because there are people out there who suffer through hard times like he did. It is no wonder why he is well known for his art pieces that mostly consisted of beautifully displayed and colorful foods and treats. Theobald retired at the age of 70 from art and teaching and currently makes occasional appearances at art galleries, shows, and venues to speak about the pop art movement and what motivated him to join in on the fun in his own way at the age of 98.